This week in the parish of bourses and market structure, in a week of all-round expansionism, we celebrate FTSE 100 futures at 40 years young, but the big birthday is at the big board. NICE is growing fast at 232. My name is Patrick L. Young. Welcome to the Bourse Business Weekly Digest. It's the Exchange Invest Weekly Podcast, episode 246. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very brief reduction of highlights amongst the key headlines from the week in market structure. All the analysis of the many events and happenings from the past seven days can be found in Exchange Invest's daily subscriber newsletter, the unique guide to the bourse business sent daily to your inbox. More details at exchangeinvest.com. The great and the good of the UK index exchange traded derivatives business gathered at Paternoster Square last week for a soiree hosted by FTSE Russell and ICE. We had a full feature in Exchange Invest discussing several of the key twists and turns in the history of the UK's leading stock index futures. Happy birthday! Who knows where FTSE will be in the next 40 years? Over in Bit Carnage, will it be a four thud? The true story? Will four months even be enough to write a whole tome? Questions abound as the billionaire Binance founder is preparing for life behind bars. Canada's most famous crypto entrepreneur, Changpeng Zhao, is teasing the idea of a writing project ahead of reporting to prison, according to Cointelegraph. Whether he can manage quiet time for writing within his sentence space, I'm not so sure. As some say jail is not such a safe space for quiet reflection. If you enjoyed this excerpt, you may be interested to know you can read BitCarnage every day on Exchange Invest. Alternatively, if you want to follow BitCarnage, the daily update on happenings in the world of crypto and digital assets, you can find BitCarnage as standalone on Substack. While FTSE futures are 40 years old across the Atlantic in the ICE Empire, the NICE celebrated its 232nd anniversary Friday as US stock market structures ride the crest of a wave. New York alone has two stock exchanges now playing in their own league when it comes to listings, and a cornucopia of innovative platforms are making better markets for the world's biggest stock market. Even talking the talk, LSEG is adrift and the contrast has never looked greater since the old 1960s, 1970s. City of London as a post-imperial construct struggling to find a place in the world. Interesting times. Meanwhile, the OTC markets in New York City are moving to provide their own Asian Day session, mimicking the NMS stock trading ATS Blue Ocean, which we discussed the other week on our live stream. That drew record crowds, incidentally, on LinkedIn as they listened into IPOVID 142, Blue Ocean and New Market Tide with Brian Hindman. Fortune this week elegantly pointed out the chasm between the US country club listings duopoly of NICE NASDAQ and the rest of the world. You can catch our short videos about that topic on YouTube, Instagram and TikTok for more on this topic which we already covered in Exchange Invest Daily. This week, in another busy week for results, there was good news from Manila, where the PSE, the Philippine Stock Exchange, reported net income up over 19%. In new markets, we have two incumbents in Ukraine under pressure and potentially losing their licenses due to associations with sanctioned persons. That means that a lot of the great and the good of Ukraine's financial markets want to create a new stock exchange, while Iceland will get its first power market after the Nord Pool deal in the near future. In deals this week, no exchange deals per se, but all the best to the Hirschen Group, who have acquired the trading assets of OSTC Markets. Meanwhile, if you're trying to work out where the world of finance is going to be in terms of market structure in the future, you ought to be thinking about my most recent book, Victory or Death, Blockchain, Cryptocurrency and the Fintech World. 
To understand how technology is affecting life and markets, pop over to Amazon or any other good bookstore and you can pick up a copy of Victory or Death, which is published by DV Books and distributed by Ingram Worldwide. While you're waiting for your copy of Victory or Death to arrive, check out our live streams, Tuesdays 5 o'clock London time, midday New York time. It's the IPO video live show. Catch the back episodes on LinkedIn and YouTube via IPO-vid. Now online, our most recent show, IPO vid 144. How appropriate that we'd have a GAN number to speak to a technical trader. Jason Sen, a seasoned trader, was speaking to us from his home in Phuket in Thailand, which made for a great show. Next week, we're going to be joined again by Reiner Zittelman. This week, he's going to be discussing his book, How Nations Escaped Poverty. Our finance book of the week, however, this week is... Also from an IPOVID guest, but not from Reiner Zittelman, it's from our IPOVID 139 guest, Bharat Kulkarni. ECX and the Wind of Change is a memoir from Ethiopia, a compelling memoir that unveils the gripping tale of how a simple idea was turned into an industry disrupting institution. Readers will be drawn into the roller coaster journey of establishing the Ethiopia Commodity Exchange, ECX. Don't forget, if you want to know what is our book of the week, you can get that. Post taste, absolutely free of charge, along with a bunch of other great macro reading in EI Weekend Edition. You can sign up for that at exchangeinvest.com. Of course, if you want to stay abreast of what's going on in the world of exchanges, you need to be reading exchangeinvest.com itself, the daily newsletter, the bulletin of the bourse business, the water cooler of the bourse business, one might say, the exchange of information. Only $375 per user year. We have a seven day test package available right now for anybody who wants to sign up thereafter we will of course take the money for the full subscription because that pays for us to do this podcast and all manner of other things product news this week a year and x have launched a new invest in france index family while comdac metals have launched four physical lithium trading contracts adding to their expanding portfolio of what i collectively title unobtainium aka high price often highly specific use case metals which are vital for the digital world. Speaking about the digital world, that moves us neatly into technology. The New York Stock Exchange have announced the launch of the NICE Tech Council, a deft move as NICE signals its increasing heft in tech, where they are often perceived to be far behind the curve of NASDAQ, the tech stock exchange, as it likes to self-profess. On the macro, this is truly, though, a two-horse race globally, where nobody else is in serious competition right now. Hong Kong may be able to amp itself up again on the back of a Chinese economic renaissance, but every other market is in a lower league. That's not to say they can't make money there, but the top flight of listings markets are the US country clubs NASDAQ and NICE. So NICE are eager to garner more recognition for what the Ice Age management team has brought to the exchange. The NICE website notes indeed 75% of tech IPO proceeds have been raised at the NICE since 2014. That's the past 10 years. The network of tech companies on NICE includes Alibaba, Dell Technologies, Pinterest, Spotify, PagSeguro, Oracle, Tencent Music and Uber Technologies. In signaling a tech council while running a conference in the west of the USA, NICE is setting out a clear sign of intent to push its tech influence further forward. In reality, while the media will talk of a NICE versus NASDAQ head-to-head, it strikes me this is as much about sourcing content in faraway places where they've grown tired of local alternatives struggling to deliver the service larger tech companies need in scale. Thus, it's a shrewd move by NICE to remind us that there is a US market which sets the pace for the world and a world market which follows nowadays often at a significant distance. That said, there is opportunity for all in the Boris business, but the days when people could say, e.g., Europe rivals the USA are long gone and unlikely to return in this generation, if ever. That, in one week, two arms of ICE can issue separate notes on how they are reshaping the world, aka mortgages on stock listing venues, shaping the tech co-discussion, is indicative of the footprint of the ICE network before we even get the globalised technology of the ICE network. Thanks for listening to Exchange Invest Weekly. We welcome your feedback. You can contact me directly, patrick at derivativesvision.com with any comments. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this show, we would welcome you giving us a thumbs up.
or if you have time, a positive review will always be welcome wherever you find this podcast. Meanwhile in regulation this week, ASIC, the Australian regulators, they're welcoming ministerial determination to progress competition and clearing and settlement reforms. It's a big headline, but will it lead to big results? I wonder. It's hard to be entirely convinced given ASIC still sleeps with those it ought to discipline on a couple of levels. On a positive note, there is a new instrument which gives ASIC more power, but hashtag seriously, you mean they didn't appreciate for the past decade and more just what a disaster area was brewing? The reality is that ever since Exchange Invest formally began publishing 11 years ago, we have been expressing clear worries about the ASX and its ability to operate a free, fair, coherent series of markets and concomitant utilities for all parties in Australia. ASIC has to be judged as part of the protectionist problem. More about this was in Exchange Invest this week. You can sign up via exchangeinvest.com, which moves us elegantly on to career paths, where the board of SET, the Stock Exchange of Thailand, have elected adjunct professor Kitty Pong Ura Pipatanga Pong as the 19th president of the SET, succeeding Pichai Chunhaved Jira, who has resigned from the position as now the finance minister. Meanwhile, congratulations to the wondrous former GHF Chairman Mark Ibbotson, who has also joined the board of ICE Futures Europe. Over in Big World this week, Exchange Invest has been continuing a comparative discussion on national defence spending. Italy is the 12th largest global military spender at a paltry 1.5% of GDP. So much for that NATO suggested 2% level for all members. Barely anybody in the EU treats that number with anything other than contempt these days. Then there's Australia, which is 1.9% GDP spend. That's roughly 32.3 US dollars. And indeed, Australia has uniquely a remarkably cavalier approach to its borders, albeit one with a comprehensible twist. Essentially, the 4,000 kilometre wide nation, a nation continent essentially, doesn't much bother policing its southern borders. I once asked an Australian army officer about this unique defensive oversight in the world, to which he replied, What's our invasion risk here? Penguins? And on that mysterious and magnificent note, thank you for listening to this Exchange Invest Weekly Podcast, number 246. Join us daily via exchangeinvest.com, or if you've got a new exchange you'd like built, get in touch. My name is Patrick L. Young, and I wish you a great week in life and markets. <laughs>